Glad you could join me. I'm back again, and I hope you enjoy the intro. Today's video is going to be a deep dive into what's left for British top tier aviation. Now, the British aviation tech tree is one of my favorites in the game because of the history and the wide variety of aircraft. The tree is just chock full of planes, but there's still a lot more Gaijin can add as it forges on into fourth generation and fourth gen plus era. I know there are probably lots of low to mid tier aircraft that could be added, but I'm going to mostly be focusing on top tier jets, like, you know, somewhere between 10.3 and 11.3. As always, this video is my opinion. You may not agree, but let's use that to get the conversation started. All right, so the first jet up is the much hyped Panavia Tornado. Now, I'm not really going to talk about the whole licensing thing and if there is an issue or if there isn't an issue. That's not the focus for today. The focus is the two main variants that I'll be covering that the RAF flew and all of the sub variants. So the Panavia Tornado is a robust and beautiful airplane built by a consortium of nations, which included the UK, Italy, and then West Germany. Entering service in 1979, this twin engine variable swept wing aircraft consisted of three basic versions for the consortium. And those were the interdiction and strike variant, the seed variant or suppression of enemy air defenses, and the ADV or air defense variant. The Tornado has been tested in combat multiple times and it has a proven combat record. The RAF operated the air defense variants and the strike versions of the Tornado. So let's talk about the strike versions first. So the RAF Tornadoes were designated GR, um, GR1, and then later upgraded to GR4 standard. All right, so the GR1 was a two seat, all weather, nuclear capable fighter bomber that carried an extensive amount of conventional air to ground ordnance. Like all strike tornadoes, um, these were equipped with some of the most technologically advanced avionics for late Cold War era aircraft. And though it had no air to air radar, it did boast a sophisticated navigation and attack ground radar with an awesome terrain following ability that enabled the tornado to fly very low, fast, and pretty much automated in any weather conditions under enemy radar. GR1s were, like I said before, later upgraded to the Mark IV standard, uh, which gave it a new heads-up display, new avionics, and integrated the electronics for the Paveway 4 bomb, and lots more. The GR1 and GR4 could carry an eye-watering amount of ordnance on multiple hardpoints, laser-guided bombs in addition to cluster munitions, you could carry the Alarm anti-radiation missile. You could actually carry up to nine of those. The GR-1 used the uh, Thermal Imaging Airborne Laser Designator Pod, and it could also carry a submunition dispenser for cratering runways. Later in the tornado's life, the GR-1 carried the Brimstone Air-to-Ground Missile, which is pretty sophisticated, the Storm Shadow Low Observable Cruise Missile, along with the Raphael Lightning Pod. You know, it was upgraded from the Thermal Imaging Airborne Laser Designator Pod. Both the GR-1 and the GR-4 were armed with the 27mm Mauser cannon. The GR-1 had two, but the GR-4 lost the cannon on the left side to avionics. Uh, as a side note, the GR-1A and the GR-4A were recon only, so I don't expect them to come to the game. And the GR-1B was a specialized anti-shipping variant, you know, that we may or may not see in the game one day. Alright, so moving on to the Tornado ADV or Air Defense variant. So this version of the Tornado was a long-range interceptor with more powerful RB199 Mark 104 engines. The GR1 and uh, GR4 use the Mark 103, I believe. So these new engines for the air defense variant of the Tornadoes were optimized for high-altitude operation. Uh, this aircraft was also equipped with the AI-24 Foxhunter radar that could track up to 20 targets simultaneously. Just like all Tornadoes, the air defense variant was very heavy and not very agile. So I hope no one's expecting this to be some kind of you know, master of the universe dogfighter because it is not. This airplane is not a dogfighter or air superiority fighter. It is an interceptor. It was better than the F-4, um, but it was designed to intercept Soviet bombers. The main threat specifically being the quite lethal supersonic Tu-22M backfire. So the air defense variant could carry the AM-9 Sidewinders and the Skyflash missile. It also had one 27 millimeter Mauser cannon. So let's go through a couple of the variants here. So the F-2 um, was a really early version, it had no radar, it had cement in the nose. Uh, it could carry only two Sidewinders and was mostly used for training. 
it had a limited service life and I believe only about 18 of those were built. So I, I don't know if Gaijin would like bring that one in. That would probably just make a lot of people mad. The main version that we're really going to talk about is the F3. So the only nations, by the way, that ever operated the air defense version of the tornado were the United Kingdom, Saudi Arabia and Italy for a short time. So that's the F3. There was also a couple of um, upgrades from there. So you have the Tornado F3 CSP um, slash AOP, which were two upgrades. So really what this did was standardize the fleet to fully use the AM120 AMRAM and the AM132 ASRAM. They had a problem with the ADVs um, in RAF service where there's kind of like fleets within fleets because the upgrades weren't really standardized. So the CSP and the AOP kind of standardized the fleet to one um, one standard, right? All right, so the last uh, uh, Tornado ADV I'll talk about here is the EF-3. So this incorporated the use of the Alarm anti-radiation missile to conduct seed missions. It modified the existing radar warning receiver on the jet uh, to, you know, basically to emitter location system logic for use with the Alarm anti-radiation missile. Uh, this aircraft, however, still retained the use of the AM-120 AMRAM and the AM-132 ASRAM. So kind of like an enhanced capability uh, Tornado F3, which would be pretty cool. So that kind of wraps up all of the tornadoes. So just to summarize here, so we have the Tornado GR-01, GR-1B, which, you know, is the maritime strike variant. Then there's the GR-4. We probably won't see GR-1As or GR-4As, which are just recon. We have the Tornado F2, which is unlikely, you know, very limited service life training version. The Tornado F3, and then we have the F3 CSP slash AOP, and finally the Tornado ADV EF3. So a couple different versions here that could hit the tech tree. So the Tornado's got a lot of life, um, especially when Gaijin decides to start adding these. So we won't be running out of Tornadoes anytime soon. All right, so moving on, I'm gonna start talking about one of my other favorite airframes, and that's the Harrier. So I'll talk about the British Aerospace Sea Harrier 2 first. So we have the FRS.1 and the FA.2 um, variants in the uh, Sea Harrier category. So the Sea Harrier FRS-1 was a sea-based VTOL jet with an extensive combat record in the Falklands and the Balkan conflict. It distinguished itself uh, in the Falklands where it shot down 20 enemy aircraft for no air-to-air -air losses of its own. Some were lost to, um, you know, to ground fire, but not to enemy aircraft. The FRS-1 was equipped with the Ferranti Blue Fox monopulse multimode radar, which was very temperamental. Um, it kind of had a poor look down capability over rough sea states and uneven terrain according to open sources. However, the aircraft was capable of carrying up to four AM9Gs or the all aspect Limas and it had two 30 millimeter Aiden cannons. And of course the AM9L greatly contributed to its stellar record in the Falklands War. Later the aircraft was upgraded with the Sky Guardian RWR and Chaffin flares and even got an expendable decoy. Moving on to the FA-2, which was a, an upgrade from the FRS-1. The FA-2, you know, addressed some of the deficiencies of the FRS-1. It had a more powerful engine, so now it could carry more payload-wise. It had better avionics. It had a, a new radar, the Blue Vixen radar, and it could now carry the AM-120 AMRAM. So another Harrier I'll include here that we could probably see in the British tech tree is the Indian Navy Sea Harrier FRS-51. Similar in capability to the FA-2 standard, it uh, was equipped with the Magic Missile and later upgraded with the Elta EL-2032 uh, Advanced Multimode Pulse Doppler Radar. It can also carry the Rafale Derby Beyond Vigil Range Air-to-Air -air Missile. Alright, so that's a lot of Sea Harriers. That's three that could be added to the game right there, but we still have more Harriers to go. So next up is the British Aerospace Harrier 2. GR5, GR7, GR7A, and GR9, and GR9A. So, you know, all of these aircraft are combat tested. Uh, some in Kosovo, some in Iraq, some in Afghanistan, just to name a few. Uh, the GR1 and GR3 that we, you know, kind of already have in the game uh, are pretty cool, but the ones I'm talking about now are heavily modified versions of these first generation Harriers. These uh, Harrier 2s use a composite in the fuselage versus aluminum which lowered its weight and gave it an increased range and payload capacity. These new uh, Harrier 2 sport two 25mm guns. They have eight hard points. 
they can carry six sidewinders and some air and missile configurations. Uh, unlike the U.S. Marine Corps AV-8B Harrier II Pluses or even the, uh, you know, the Royal Navy Sea Harriers, um, the Harrier IIs, you know, funny enough, never had uh, an air-to-air -air radar. So, you know, no AMRAMs for them. But they could carry, uh, you know, the AM-9Ls, uh, all aspect sidewinders, dumb bombs and rockets. Um, so that kind of flavor. And so I was talking about the GR-5 there. So moving up to the GR-7 and GR-7A, the GR-7 added a nose-mounted forward-looking infrared, night vision goggles, and electronic countermeasures suite, a moving map, which would be great for sim. The GR-7A upgrade um, pretty much just updated the Pegasus engine, which gave the uh, GR-7A a uh, lots more payload carrying capability. Uh, the GR-7As and any remaining 7s were also able to carry the uh, Thermal Imaging Airborne Laser Designation Pod. Uh, it was an urgent operational need, I believe, in Afghanistan. There weren't that many pods, um, so, you know, it, in the game, of course, it should get the pod. Really, we're not worried about inventory when it comes to War Thunder. And of course, the pod giving it the ability to uh, carry laser guided bombs. So the uh, final version is the GR-9A, which is an upgraded version of the GR-7A, which added AGM-65 Maverick capability. It also uh, added the capability to carry the lightning pod to replace the thermal imaging airborne laser designating pod, which was getting a little bit old. All right, so that's four additional versions of the Harrier 2 right there that can be added to the game. All right, so move it on to the uh, the Jaguars here. I've got three of those that I'm going to talk about. Actually, uh, four. So the first one up is the GR3A. You know, this one is you know, not a whole lot of new stuff. It's everything you get with the GR1A, uh, but you get new avionics. There's a helmet mounted sighting system. There's um, some upgraded engines, which give you more thrust, which is always greatly appreciated when it comes to the Jags. What this upgrade did was mostly standardize the fleet, kind of like the CSP AOP did for the Tornado ADV. So now all of the jets had the uh, thermal imaging airborne laser designation pod. Uh, right now with the GR1A uh, with the Taladin game, it's really just a GR1B, really. It's kind of, uh, I think Gaijin didn't really designate it correctly. Um, so ending this one real quick, always happy um, that the Jag gets more engine power. It, to me, it's always underpowered. Uh, I'm glad uh, the engines are always an upgrade item. So a good one for the GR3A. The next Jags I'll talk about are Indian Air Force uh, versions of it. So the Jaguar IM and the IS. The IM was the Maritime Strike version fitted with the Agave radar. It carried the Sea Eagle anti-ship missile. Uh, and that radar was later upgraded to the ELM-2052, which is a pretty good radar set. So the IS version is the Strike variant, and that also was upgraded with the ELM-2052 radar. That version could carry um, the magic missiles over the wings, um, magic ones or magic twos, carried a lot of dumb and guided bombs, just like other Jags. All right, so the last one I'll talk about is the Jaguar Max, which was showcased by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Now this one, um, they call it the mother of all upgrades as an EL-2052 radar um, with, you know, wide band jamming, an infrared search and track system, missile approach warning, uh, overwing next generation IR missiles, wherever those are, outboard uh, next generation BVR missiles. It can carry cruise missiles. It can carry a radar and a laser designating pod. Uh, it has new engines. So I haven't seen much information on this other than that it was it's probably just a one-off um like proof of concept uh shown to the uh indian air force and government so definitely a lot of capability there and it would definitely be a uh, high tier jag option so that's uh wrapping up the jaguars it's three more there that can be added to the british tech tree all right so next up is the british aerospace hawk t1a and the hawk 200 that uh, malaysia flies so I think uh, these would be pretty good ads. The T1A can carry two AM9Ls and an Aiden gun pod. Uh, it was originally conceived to replace the Hawker Hunters and RAF service. So pretty cool jet. The Hawk 200 is a um, highly maneuverable single seat, light multi-role fighter, is capable of CAS, anti-shipping, air defense, etc. So this thing has seven hard points and this can carry a wide assortment of air to ground weapons, anti-ship missiles and gun pods. I mean, this thing can even carry uh, AGM-65 Mavericks and even torpedoes, AM-9Ls, AM-132 ASRAMs, and the AM-120 AMRAM. It has an APG-66 multi-mode radar, so the same kind of radar set you'll find in F-16s, a laser rangefinder, 
night vision goggles, forward looking infrared, sky guardian, self protection suite with automatic chep and flares. You know, looking at this, it kind of reminds me of an AMX Ghibli um, in its appearance and capabilities. All right, so moving on here, we're getting kind of to the top end, uh, at least for all British jets, uh, is the Typhoon F2 and FGR4. So this fourth gen plus uh, fighter that replaced all the tornadoes and Jags and RAF service, of course, is highly capable with extremely high performance, has a captor E radar, it has an infrared search and track, missile approach warning ECM, helmet mounted sight, Lightning 3 pod, so like all the bells and whistles, the Typhoon F2 was a single seat fighter variant with no air to ground capability as these were tranche 1 block 2s. So the upgraded um, version uh, from the F2 is the block 5 FGR4, which is the standard that the RAF flies right now. The FGR4 denoting full multi-role capabilities such as fighter, ground attack, and reconnaissance. The aircraft has one 27mm Mauser cannon. 13 hard points can carry laser guided bombs, brimstone, ATGM, storm shadow, ASRAM, AMRAM, and meteors. So, you know, the full meal deal when it comes to high performance 4th gen plus fighters. So, we'll definitely see this in the game one of these days. Uh, not soon, but it, it will be coming. Next up is the F 35B Lightning. Um, this is operated by both the RAF and the Naval Fleet Air Arm. They operate under one single command structure called the Lightning Force Headquarters. Alright, so this is a 5th generation stealth fighter, short takeoff vertical landing, replaced the Harrier GR-9A, has APG-81 ASA radar, uh, ASQ-239 Barracuda electronic warfare system, electro-optical targeting system, all aspect missile launch warning and target tracking, sensor fusion of radio frequency and infrared tracking functions, geolocation threat targeting, multi-spectral image countermeasures for self-defense against missiles. I mean, this thing goes on and on and on with stuff. Um, even the radar is capable of detecting and jamming hostile radars. So, <laughs> uh, I don't know. When this thing comes, I mean, this, this might be like three, four years into the future. I have no idea um, how far Gaijin's gonna go with this. Uh, so weapons. 125 millimeter cannon, internal weapons bays can carry weapons externally as well. Laser guided bombs, brimstone, probably storm shadow, ASRAM, Amaran, Meteor, etc. Lots and lots of toys here uh, in the F-30B Lightning, or excuse me, F-35B Lightning. Um, you know, the top tier British plane. All right, so with the British main line out of the way, I'll talk about the South African sub-branch. So, uh, Gaijin's been doing that for the ground side. Hopefully, they'll continue that trend into the air side of things. So, the South African Air Force operated the Mirage 3 and the Mirage F1, AZ, and CZ. So, there was a major upgrade of the Mirage 3, that being the Atlas Cheetah. So, the Atlas Cheetah came in three major variants, the C, D, and E. Now, that borrowed some technology from the Israeli Air Force Kafir. So, um, moving on in the, the Cheetah timeline, the Cheetah E is was an interim fighter until the Cheetah C entered service, so it's a little out of order here, which is not very intuitive. But the Cheetah E did carry the uh, EL-2001 radar, which is a pretty uh, good basic set. The Cheetah C, which was the most advanced version of the Atlas Cheetah for the South African Air Force, uh, carried the Elbit ELM-2032 radar, which is the same radar that the Israeli F-16s use. It had an advanced helmet mounted sight, uh, which is pretty interesting, uh, seeing that it can carry the Python 3 missile. Um, it could carry, you know, precision guided air to ground munitions, the V4R darter um, BVR missile, and the A darter infrared homing missile. Uh, the other one is the Cheetah D, which was the only two seater um, version of it. it. Uses a trainer mostly, but it had a secondary ground attack role. Um, it also carried the EL 2001 radar. The only other Cheetah to talk about is. Um, the Cheetah R, which was a reconnaissance version, which probably wouldn't make it into the game anyway. All right, so last aircraft up, and if you're still here, I really appreciate it, um, but it's the South African Air Force Jazz 39C Gripen, single seat, multi-role, lightweight fighter with advanced avionics, a PS-05A uh, pulse Doppler radar, you know, as a Mauser cannon, can carry Sidewinders, Micas, V4R darters, A darters, AMRAMs, and a wide variety of air to ground munitions, including the Maverick, even any ship missiles. So um, that's it for the uh, my ideas or my opinions for what could be added at top tier 
to the British tech tree. As you can see, lots and lots of choices here. I think um, uh, the British tech tree is going to grow into a favorite, a fan favorite for a lot of people who haven't quite discovered it yet. But um, what do you guys think? Questions, comments, um, something else you would add here? Uh, is there something that I missed? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. You know, these videos take me a long time to do because there's a lot of research involved. Um, so if you watch to the end, I really appreciate that. And I would appreciate it if uh, you hit that thumbs up button if you liked it. And if you're not subscribed yet, consider subscribing. Thank you. Thank you.